Well, hello, everybody. It is the DNA Show with your weekly movie review. We know it's the highlight of your week, and not just because it's also Friday. Anyhow, last night, Dennis and I went and saw the final chapter in this exciting trilogy that we know everybody cares about so much, Venom, The Last Dance. Um, one thing I did look up is I like their timeline in regards to putting the movies out. The first one was 2018. So, you know, six years, basically three years apart. That's good. You know when to expect it, you know. Um, all right, Dennis, what is Venom The Last Dance about? Well, Eddie and Venom are on the run. For the, I'm assuming you all watched the second one, so you'll know that they're on the run from, you know, the events from number two. But they face pursuit from both worlds. That's right. The military's after them and something else sinister from afar. As circumstances tighten, they're compelled to make a heart-wrenching choice that could mark the end of their symbiotic partnership. <gasps> yeah, so another thing too, and I believe this they the movie starts with I believe it was the after credit scene from No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home. So I'm glad that they did that cuz it kind of ties it together. But I also don't think it's 100% like, if you didn't see Spider-Man No Way Home, which I'm sure if you're watching this, you did. But if you didn't, I don't think you're going to be lost, you know. Um, Tom Hardy's back, of course, playing uh, Eddie Brock Venom. You know, Tom's a great actor. He, uh, after three movies, you, you know, I buy in with his performance and stuff. He plays him. You know, Tom's a big dude, but he plays him, you know, kind of nervous and shaky and stuff which is which is fun and it's a nice contrast because obviously venom is the more uh aggressive of the two persona characters and stuff so that was cool um juno oh juno temple is that her full name did i get that yep. right yep oh the score score one. score one for me juno temple who uh if you watch ted You'll know who that is. Um, she's great. She plays a scientist, has a kind of messed up childhood. Uh, she's she's a fun actress, and it was cool seeing her in a different type of role. Yeah. So I will say this. Um, the beginning of the movie starts off with this huge exposition dump. And it's trying to get you up to speed because it's trying to introduce you to the big bad that is behind it all. No. And boy, is he going to bring some incredible badass stuff throughout this movie and is going to be an integral part of this movie. Oh, wait. No, he's not. Yeah, they set him up as an expedition, exposition dump just so that you can see some bad guys that he winds up sending to earth trying to get the codex. Uh, well, that, that the, is the entire point of his existence uh, in the yeah. movie. And it was kind of unimportant. And for the it big, really, guy, they, you watch the late, the last trailer and they mention all, they show them in the trailer and it really is kind of a bait and switch. Cause like Dennis said, you think, you're going to see more of this dude. Like, cause he, you know, obviously he's the ruler of the symbiotes, we'll say. And he sends the creatures on a hunt for the codex, which only Venom symbiote has. The other ones don't. And from the, from the trailer, you think, oh shit, we're going to get to see Null in action, like Thanos in action or something. Right. And I mean, you really don't, you see him almost as much as you do in the whole trailer in the movie. Kind of, kind of a letdown. If I was the actor, I would have been like, "What?" Um, yeah, and I and and I saw when you finally do get to see him, I was like, "Huh, is that Andy Circus?" It was, it was. But for that little bit that you got to see it, so the movie really is held up completely by Tom Hardy's performance. Oh, yeah. Tom Hardy plays Eddie Brock and can play against a CG counterpart. Venom 
extremely well. So I will say this, if you guys enjoyed them in the first two movies, you will enjoy them in, in this movie. It's in the exact same uh, right. vein of it. You know, you get introduced to some of your favorites, you know, reintroduce, you know, Mrs. Chen's back in it and you absolutely she's love her and yeah. she's adorable. They, they have a fun little road trip um, with the family. Um, Rias Ephens plays Martin. And those two could have done a really fun now, buddy road trip kind of movie. And I almost wish that, they would have had, had done that. That family was good. And that family's, the parents, not necessarily the kids. The kids are being drugged along, are in search of Area 51, want to see aliens, stuff like that. That actor... Do you remember who he played in uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man first movie? Uh, or maybe it was the second. It was the know. second. No, I don't remember. Lizard. Oh, that's right. Doc Connors. Yeah, because I looked him up. Because you mentioned the name Yeah, last from night. the replacements. And, ah, right. And it didn't ring a bell. It, it didn't ring a bell because, I mean, you mentioned movies that are, I don't know, three decades old. And um, so I went and looked him up and I was like, holy shit, that's a guy. He didn't look like the headshot that's online at IMDb for that guy. You look at it, you go, oh, that's the lizard. Now, wonder I didn't recognize him. Holy crap. They did such a great makeup job with the hair and the beard. Um, anyhow, back to the story. So Juno Temple plays the scientist, you know, at a place called Area 55, which is 100 feet underground at 51. So nobody knows about it. And they're basically researching symbiotes and stuff. You know, they're trying to grab them, contain them. You know, there's a callback from a guy from uh, a previous movie. And, you know, it, it all leads up to the big the big uh, candy at the end, which is, you know, the fight between, between the creatures sent by Null to get the, the codex. And, of course, they introduce a crap ton more of uh you know venoms like i think screamer screaming whatever her name is guys i'm not that steeped into the venom uh world in the comics but if you are it's total fan service you know uh i think like dennis said is this an award-winning movie no not at all none of them are but if you liked one if you like two i think obviously you'll definitely like this it finishes off the trilogy nice. And uh, here's a question for you. Two or three, which one did you think was better? Carnage three. or this one? Three. Huh? Same I was here. Not, I was not that big of a fan of Carnage. I Same. thought one was the best out of it. And yeah. then this was fun. This had its moments. It had its charm. There's a great scene in um, Las Vegas that's fun. Um, you know, it definitely had its moments, the, the family moment where they all meet and they're driving in their hippie van and stuff. And that was fun. You get to see a fun scene with Cristo Fernandez, which we all know he's the bartender in this, but we all know him as Danny from Ted Lasso. So again, yeah. that was in there. They just left a lot out. And what I mean by that is, you brought up uh, Juno Temple, who I love as an actress. Her character mm -hmm. was very generic. Nothing. Oh, they yeah. had a little story. I really wish they would have gave us more as to what was going on behind the scenes. It feels to me like there was a lot on the cutting room floor. And, oh, I'm not can never pronounce his name. It's uh, Chiwetel Ejiofo. Oh, right. um, he plays um, the military man. And again, very generic. Unlike him, he would play this role very good, and it was, but it was very generic. So they they just didn't develop enough on the characters. Now, it's only an hour and 49 minutes long, and I'm telling you, we stayed for the two after credit scenes. The credits were at least 10 minutes. They were like the longest credits I've seen in forever. Well, you know why they almost had to double up. I noticed because a lot there was there was Mexican Mexico shooting. You know they yeah. shot Mexico and whatever. So when just when you think the credits are over, you start seeing credits in Spanish, and you're like, oh god, yeah. 
but what I'm saying is it's only an hour 50, st uh, not even to start with, knock another 10 minutes off. This was a short movie. I was not bored. It was timed right. But I think yeah. it might have been too short because they, they left some stuff up. Yeah, after, credit that scenes, too. after credit scenes, the first one was meh. You know, didn't really need to be there. And the last one, you might as well walk out and not waste your 10 minutes. You know what the first one felt like? Honestly, it felt like the after credit scene in Green Lantern when uh, he becomes Sinestro. What's his face? The actor. Yeah. Uh, becomes Sinestro uh, with the yellow costume and stuff. And it felt like that because you're going, well, that's never going to get made. There's not going right. to be another one of these. Yeah, they and, set it up like if they're going to continue it, and unless they're planning something else. But this is this is it for Tom Hardy. So I don't right. know what they're trying to do. Again, guys, this is an uh, Avi Arad, uh, you know, setup, and his movies have sucked for quite a while. Well, and the thing and too is does not help out this franchise at all. The thing too is. You just think, you know, it's not going to move forward with, I, I don't think at all with that after credit scene. Mm -mm. And there were rumors that the after credit scene might somehow try to link it back with Tom Hardy, Spider-Man and stuff. Cause, but it didn't, you know, not a spoiler. <laughs> uh, we didn't tell you what the after credit scene was, but it didn't. And like I said, I really just felt like, well, I know this isn't going to happen. I'm willing to bet money it's not going to happen. So why wouldn't you try to link it with something that is going to happen? Now, granted, this movie was shot a while ago, but I'm sure they knew Spider-Man 4 was going to happen. It starts filming, you know, next year. Well, this so. was written during the strike uh, era, and it, it kind of feels like it. I'm yeah. just going to say this, guys. If you like the first two, this is in the same vein. You'll enjoy yeah. it. If you didn't like it, you will not like this one. There's nothing. If you didn't like the first one, if you didn't like the first one and you were like, well, maybe the second one's better, I'll see that. And you weren't thrilled. Yeah, save your money. All right, Dennis, let's CGC this puppy. Rate it from a 0.5 to a 10.0. Where are you, my man? I am giving this one a 6.0. It was uh, fun. It had its moments um, that were really good. CG was a solid, which I can't see in a lot of movies lately. Yeah. Tom Hardy was fantastic. Um, and other than his relationship, um, you know, with Martin in there, you know, that was about the highlight of it. It was, it was all right. Glad I saw it. Uh, I won't be buying this one. Yeah. I'm giving it a 6.5. So we're right about the same, same stuff. Tom Hardy was great. Tom Hardy's relationship with venom when he was talking to just the head that pops out and stuff it was fun nice ending nice wrap up to the story uh so yeah 6.5 i don't buy movies generally anyhow so i can't even say i did see and i didn't tell you this before the movie because i didn't want to cloud your judgment in any way i did see somebody post that they thought it was worse than joker 2 and i'm just like well i haven't seen joker 2 but i can't imagine that so I, I just uh, saw somebody that said it was a five out of five, one of the best movies. And then I just saw the very next one come out and say it was a one five. This is one of the worst movies. So this might be one of those movies that maybe people will either love it or hate it. I'm kind of in the middle and uh, it's fine. Well, what do we got on with the Let's just see IMDB Venom, the last dance. As a 6.2 rating. So, yeah, it's about right. Look and, at that. Uh, We're becoming professionals. And let me uh, bring up Rotten Tomatoes. The critics hate this movie at 36%. Now, I, it is not 36% bad, uh, folks. No. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you that. Um, and the audience is giving it a 77 <laughs> Well, there you go. And this weekend, this Sunday, Dennis and I will be in Greenville, South Carolina at uh, South Carolina Comic-Con Junior. Uh, if you're around that area, Greenville, South Carolina, it's a great one day show. It's really big, really yep. fun. So come see us. And uh, also 
We can talk to you about Cordrath, The Reckoning, and of course, Cordrath Volume 2, The Awakening. If you're fans of Conan, Game of Thrones, Dungeons and Dragons, guys, we guarantee you'll like this book. If you missed out on the first one, you can get it in the catch-up tier, which is featured, has a new Bud Root cover. And of course, uh, just to let you guys know, we did add the Irene Strakowski variant cover, uh, the color one you can buy by itself. And the black and white line art one is only available in the collector boxes. And if you've already backed those boxes, we're putting both those covers in, obviously at no additional cost, and they forever come with the boxes. So you're getting a really good bargain. The link for this is in the description below. So go check that out. And uh, thank you very much. Come see us at the show. We will be back next Wednesday at a special time, 4.30 in the afternoon to accommodate our guests, Mark Poulton and Chris Graves, to talk about their new project. And until then, have a great weekend and be safe, everybody. Bye-bye. An ancient evil awakened to slaughter his family. A mythical quest was revealed. Treacherous perils await.